Yeah. Greetings and salutations, you lovely little earthlings. It is Lee Godlock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties, and I gotta set up this episode. I think we need an 18 plus rating for this epi because we're diving into this T1 Quang Gong series, and I'm surprised this was airing on Twitch, Mark. Yeah, especially game two, you had to look away at times. Which terms of service, my man? It's it's been changing. It's changing. What is able to be on there and a beat down the likes of T1 handed out fresh to the Guangdong freaks? Oh yeah, people want to see that one. Uh, so they're cooking something up. Obviously, we get 480 carries in this first game in the bot lane. Uh, Kyria on this Callista, absolute psychopath. They get a double kill. He's level one. And he's jumping forward against a couple of level twos and ends up getting two kills. You ever walk by something on the street, some restaurant, maybe it's the hot dog cart. I don't care what it is, but you get that smell and you're like, oh man, someone's been cooking something good. That's what it's like at the T1 headquarters or rolling into the LCK studios when Karia and Guma are out there on the rift, busting out the Callista and the Callista ADC, because this is, this is pretty much not Callista support. This is Karia taking over control as the ADC. Works like a charm for T1. They're very clean, controlled in this game one and very dominant from the bottom lane. And they did. Game one was the four fun T1. Basically just one play where they kind of give up four kills. Karia jumps in a hex gate to give him another one. That's the only real slip up and that was obviously them playing a little bit loosey goosey, but if if the T1 kitchen is smelling great, Zeus is sitting in the side kitchen making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich saying, slam Aatrox, slam another Aatrox. I'll go 0-2 and, and then I'll destroy them in team fights. The old reliable, always good for it. The PB&J sandwich. Yes, <laughs> Aatrox coming on through. It doesn't matter what you do to this champion, what you do to Zeus on this champion, he's gonna find a way to get some sort of advantage. He was 0-2, one item completed. And he's basically going around one, two shotting people on this champion, unkillable at that point. Zeus masterclass, what you had going on cooking everywhere else in this one from T1 was fantastic. We wanted to see a bounce back from the Kwang Dong freaks. I think you need to be lenient in how you're viewing this one because of the what T1 brought out on the day and how quickly they were able to execute it. Yeah, and they again had a had a movie theater date afterwards because game two was even more next level 25 minutes mark they had 34 kills just t1 in 25 minutes i i, I don't know the numbers but that's got to be the highest kill per minute game that we've had at least in 2024 i mean probably from the lck no question it's got to be one of those ones you had owner going nutso on the vi he says I welcome back it. owner damn I heard, yeah, I heard you like Guan's Viego. How about my buy out here on the stage? And yeah, that's hitting an extra level of lethality. Zeus doing what Zeus does best still. It looked like a replay from game one for Zeus. <laughs> More or less. And then of course, you go down to the bottom lane and what are we cooking this time? Oh, it's back to the pentakill. It's back to Tom Kench rolling in the bottom lane. It's no pentakill this time, but it was certainly extremely effective for T1. Well, you've still got the Tom Ketch solo killing a top laner, uh, so... <laughs> Just carry things, right? Just carry things. Yeah, so 59 kills in 54 minutes across the two games, under an hour, almost 60 kills. Absolute massacre on the rift for T1 to be going full steam ahead, maximum hype now for that Gen G showdown. Both squads heading in with a 12 and one record. It's going to be incredible to get it matching up like this. You know, we already had the Telecom War this year, and we always talk about the Telecom War doesn't disappoint. The Telecom War disappointed this time <laughs> around. Didn't have the same type of firepower on both sides. This Gen G T1 matchup, this one is the certified almost never, ever, ever going to disappoint you. This one's going to be a banger. You're looking at how the teams are playing heading into this one. I think Chovy and Canyon are both playing fantastic and keen has leveled himself up for this Gen G team. Gonna be necessary going up against Zeus and what he's been showing this week for T1. And then what do you do about the bottom lane if you're a Gen G? Because you just had a support for T1 play Callista and Tom Kench. How do you prepare against what possibilities this bot lane is going to cook up on you? You got to ban out the Aatrox for Zeus because you can at least ban that. You're not banning out the bot lane. It's impossible to ban out Kyria. 
you, I think that is the strategy you got to go for because right now, uh, the strength and comfort that someone like Zeus is showing, obviously on a champion like Aatrox, doesn't matter really. I think the champion at this point, just his level of confidence and form he's able to exert out on the rift is so good. He's going to be able to do that. You got to identify against him. The bottom lane, they're cooking up something. You, there is no possibility within those five bands, even if you're spending all five bands on it, that you're going to get something that you want or feel like you have the advantage in that situation. I like that call, identifying the top lane. It, it might be the other only thing you really want to take away is that center pick because it gives such flexibility for what Kyria can do. He's already the scariest Tom Kench on the planet, but we've seen him play so many other things alongside that center. So that's got to be the two avenues you're looking at if you're Gen G. That was the good side of the game's days. We got to get to a bit of the ugly because we had the combined 11 game losing streak. KT Rolster versus Fear X. And it looked like there was an 11 game combined losing streak, especially in this first game. Absolutely neither team wanted to win game one. No, this this was as, as bad as it really gets for the LCK because I'll say it, and I don't mean this in any type of real shame to the LCS because, hey, we've been going on an upward trajectory lately. This looks like old. LCS type of footage, this type of game. We're, we're talking the dark years of the LCS and what was happening out on the Rift. This was an ugly one, certainly one of those ones where I'm, I'm pretty thankful, I guess, that they've removed the question mark ping system because you'd be spamming that one on your boy Closer. No questions asked. Flashing forward on a Karma to W a Gwen, who then just pops the little mist and you're dead. What are you trying to do? Look, I don't like uh, this boring tank karma situation as much as anyone else. Playing it like that is absolutely not the way that we're clearing this thing from the meta or making a, situ a statement to Riot to say, get this out of here. Didn't look good for Fear X in game one, and it didn't improve for game two is the way that this one went. Pretty much the only thing that looked really positive in this series well, number one is Piosik on the Lee Sin. He's had himself a pretty good series. Had some nice good kicks, yeah, yeah. Keeping track of that one, I think as well, you can look at Perfect T in the top side for KT. Another good, uh, uh, you know, relatively good series from him, more experience, more growth. BDD in this one, again, the guy that we have identified for KT that we really want to see pick it up and carry this team a little further. I don't think we saw that, and I don't think anyone really even saw him out there on the rift on the Oriana. Yeah, I mean, couple, I think it was pretty much first pick or first round pick Oriana's for him. And yeah, he, he was just there. He was throwing some shields around, but didn't have much of an impact. It's not like we're screaming KT back into contender status after 2-0 in this series. Yeah, not even close. Not even close, my man. They're going to have to earn it a little bit more. You know, even if this was the type of thing they needed to look even better today to warrant that type of reaction, that type of change in direction for them. Need to see another match and a better, more put together match from this KT Rolster team. Unfortunately, LPL side of things wasn't a whole lot better. The 2024 Zhao Hu versus Rookie matchup doesn't quite hit anymore like it did in 2018. This is like, you know, you ever bust out that N64, the old PS2, PS1, the original Xbox, and you're all excited. You got that nostalgia. And you're like, oh, yeah, but it really doesn't look as good as I remembered. <laughs> or it doesn't just hit that same type of nostalgia feel. That's this matchup, Rookie and Xiao, who it, both of them, I think we've talked about it within the past year, have been at the type of levels that you talk about and their careers are known for. That's not the state that we're in right now. And we were there pretty much a week ago for someone like Rookie and how things were going for Ninjas in Pajamas. And it has quickly come right back down to a situation of uncertainty around what you're getting, what type of Rookie we're getting in this matchup. Well, you didn't know what type of Rookie you were getting on the day. You didn't know what type of Shanji you were gonna see on the day. And it was the Shanji that struggled on Atrox. Yeah, you, you watch side by side, Zeus on Atrox and Shanji this series Don't on Atrox. <laughs> Oh, that's that's a painful experiment that nobody should be subjecting themselves to. It doesn't to. look like they're both, both pro players. That first game, it looked like everybody was playing on an N64, except for Zhao Hao on that Viego who ended up stealing the game. But these were worse throws back and forth than the KT Fox series. 
yeah, th th this one in, in the competition that nobody wants to win, this was certainly the ugliest match of the day between NIP and Weibo Gaming. You don't come out of this really with almost any confidence for either one of these squads. I think you can look maybe, maybe at Weibo, and you're possibly talking about Light a little bit, and by, you know, the job that he role he played in this series, but still not necessarily building up the confidence that you want if you're Weibo Gaming. And if you're ninjas in pajamas, this is confirming a lot of people's worst fears about you, that you are looking like frauds in the sense of being an elite team in the LPL. Dark Horse might be as high as it gets for the label that you could slap onto yourself. And that right now, the way things are trajectorying for NIP and what's left for them in the schedule, that's going to be a, a best case scenario, getting that Dark Horse label. Yeah, I think, I think NIP now, they're cuffed. They're in the back of the cruiser. The fraud police have finally caught up to them. Even still, at 7-4, and four, they're going to make playoffs probably, but are we going to have faith in them? You know, there's still many weeks left, but a first-round bow-out seems inevitable if they're in this form. Teams ahead of them, teams where you're looking in the, in the situations of the standings were lining up for FPX, IG, that type of territory to be someone you might roll into in that first round. That ain't going to go well for this Ninjas in Pajamas team right now in this type of situation. Uh, rookie individually, not his best performance this series. And, and as we talked about earlier, really looking at a guy like Shanji, who has been, you know, solid enough for this team and one of those players that we're looking at where his trajectory is going to go this year. Got a bit of a question mark on my boy right now up in the top side after this last one. We've got LCS going on Friday. It's the Super Week, so we're going to preview all that action uh, before the weekend stuff kicks off. Plenty of other big matches on the weekend, but we still got the Friday to get to. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beautiful people, as always. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.